Hello everyone, or more likely, no one, and welcome to Europa Universalis 4. I'm Paragon Saber, and I'm sure you've already noticed that this is not your usual EU4 1444 map. This is an idea that's been floating around my head for quite a while, something that I, yes, a completely random person with uh, absolutely no streaming and or game playing, let's playing experience, but I digress. Uh, series that I've wanted to attempt putting out for a while seemed like fun. Uh, those of you that have played or seen the Shattered Europa mod will probably think this looks fairly similar to that. It is, it's just done entirely within the base game of EU4 uh, with the 1.20 patch and all the DLCs. No contact pa packs though, can't afford that. Basically what I've done, uh, in, in the shortest hand I can possibly say, is gone through, released every vassal that I can at the start of the game, released every personal union I can at the start of the game, and basically made every existing nation spit out as many revolter tags as possible. So you can see that France isn't really France, Castile spit out Leon, and all sorts of other tags have come into existence because of this. Uh, before I get any further, there are a couple exceptions. The Vessels that I was unable to release, uh, I did all of this through the console, but the vessels that I was unable to release are the vessels of Mawa, Gondwana, and Bundelkhand, because their vassalage is enforced by a truce at the beginning, and the vessels of Ayutthaya, Sukathai, and Lagor, because the game just really wants them to be vassals of Ayutthaya. That said, you can see things like Ming and full Ming explosion mode. Rest in peace, Rights of Man patch, and before, OP Ming is here to stay, I think. Or, uh, you've already seen France, Muscovy's had its stuff spit out. One that I always like to mention is Semyon, which is actually Jewish. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's the only Jewish, er, the only state that defaults to Jewish in the game. I don't expect them to survive Ethiopia very long, but uh, I feel that they're worth, worth a mention. So the plan is to sit here in observer mode and basically just watch the carnage unfold. All, all nations have retained all of their cores. The Ottomans still have cores on Edirn, Macedonia, all the Bulgarian lands, Ser or uh, Skopje, all this sort of stuff, and all of the Beyliks over here. France still has cores on France. So you can expect to see a lot of reconquest wars before, well, before 1446, let's say. So, uh, really the point here is uh, I want this to be the baseline for a series, or group of series, where I, che uh, where I tweak this formula a little bit at the start. So instead of just leaving everybody with all their cores at the beginning, I can't talk, I might go in and say, get rid of all of the starting generals that I can. Uh, I might, for one, go in and... Uh, get rid of all of the Major's cores, or all cores on other nations outright. Or I could go in and remove the Major's entirely. For example, an idea I have for getting rid of the Ottomans is giving Bolu to Kandar, giving Hudavendigar to Jermion, giving Biga to Sugla, and then creating a little Greek custom nation for Coachelli. I know you could uh, just give that to the Byzantines, but I eh, don't want to make them too strong either. Rome's got to work for its restoration. Other things could be done for France and for England. And all of those sorts of nations. Which would be a lot closer to what Shattered Europa actually is. But I digress. I've been sitting here talking without anything happening for long enough. I'm going to go ahead and go speed 3 and just let this tick until the 1st of December, because I want to look at the reshuffled Great Powers list. It would still show the original Great Powers list right now. So here it is, 1st of December. This is uh, definitely not what it uh, what the Great Powers list usually looks like. We have fellows like Bengal and John Purr with 120 development, uh, making the Great Power list from India. Poland also with 120, usually not a Great Power at the start, unless they take the Union. Uh, but yes, also coming in at 120, having lost Galicia, Valenia, and Krakow, and had to release Mazovia and Moldavia. 
Muscovy coming in at 5th at 129, having lost Nizhny Novgorod, Kasim, and all of its vassals. England coming in at 4th at 150, having lost Northumberland, Wales, Cornwall, Normandy, a little bit to Gascony, a little bit to Armagnac, uh, Calais to Flanders. In 3rd is Ashikaga, who is completely unchanged from the start of the game, but just doesn't make the Great Powers list due to not quite having enough from subject development. Of course, their own development, only 21, but uh, their subjects having appears to be 316, uh, which, you know, if it didn't count for half, it would get them on the Great Powers list in a normal game, but that's not the case. And second is Castile, who has only had to spit out Leon and Galicia. Makes their life fairly easy compared to some other nations, like their neighbor Aragon, who has lost a lot. But uh, they retain quite a bit. And in first place is the Mamluks, who uh, are lucky enough to be the only nation to have cores on all of Egypt, Israel, Jordan, uh, modern southern Lebanon. Shout out to the Lebanon tag, by the way. And uh, all of this stuff. So the Mamluks have gotten lucky. But will the AI continue to, continue to make them so? That is the question. We'll restart the game here, and again, we're not really going to see any war starting until about March of 1445. I'm sure if you've played a game next to the Ottomans, you've seen that, where the Ottomans like to choose their first target, usually Kandar, Albania, every once in a while Byzantium, and they'll declare that war around like the 6th or 7th of March. Of course, it can be later. I've seen them wait to declare on anybody until 1446, but uh, since there are so many weak tags to reconquest in this, uh, those wars pretty much start in March. I cannot think of the correct word there. I apologize. Regardless, it's getting close to that time. Start clicking on the people that we expect to be declaring war. Ah, there we go. England has picked Wales as its first target up here. Rest in peace, Wales. There's Aragon going for Catalonia. There's the Ottomans going for Byzantium. There's Muscovy going for Nizhny Novgorod. Kazan, though, has also had that idea, so, uh, who has the siege? Oh ho ho! Kazan has the Siege of Nizhny Novgorod. That's going to frustrate Muscovy. Crimea going for Zaporozhye. That sounded very American. Karaman going for Aretna. Who, by the way, has... Huh. Dolkadir also going for Aretna. Interesting. In the east, we'll go ahead and give it a pause, because I'm sure there's a lot going on over here. Jean Per going for... I have no idea how to pronounce this. Oud? Uh, that sounds kind of awful. Uh, Vijayanagar going for Kaladi. Bachmanis going for Ahmednagar. Gujarat taking a swing at Marwar. And Punjab fighting Multan. Ming has chosen Qi as its first target. And you'll notice that Ming has... I mean, Ming is highly f reduced from what they normally are. You know, they start out with over a thousand development in base EU4. And right now, I mean, they're less than 129. Speaking of, welcome to the Great Power List, Wu. And Poland making that jump means that they probably took the Union, so congratulations there. Wu being this purple fellow here. Uh, but Ming will hold on to an army far above their force limit uh, while they feel like they have the treasury to handle that. And because they have such a good opening treasury, they can do that for a little bit. Gives them quite the advantage at the start. Continuing on. Kazakhstan being attacked by Uzbek. Uz Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan are about one in the same, cores-wise. Kazakh has cores from basically Lower Isham 
all the way down to Alamadi. I didn't want to give them all of those and just eliminate the Uzbek tag. And to be fair, Sibir also uh, has all of these cords up here that Uzbek does not. But uh, I felt like this was an acceptable compromise for size. Because Uzbek starts out with an army and Kazakh doesn't, it generally ends up that Uzbek gets its cores back, but I'm hoping in some of those later series where uh, those cores are gone that Kazakh might stand a little bit more of a chance. Bashkiria getting attacked by Nogai, Kokand getting eaten by the severely reduced Timurids. Poor little Sharja over here getting eaten by Najd. I was pretty surprised to find a revolter tag in the Arabian Peninsula, but uh, this does exist. I don't think I've ever seen that in a uh, in a normal U4 game. Definitely a fun little unicorn. The Great Horde actually choosing to guarantee Kasem this game. Kasem in this province of Kazimov, very Russian. Uh, actually a little Khanate that Muscovy conquered some time before the events of EU4. Uh, makes sense that the like, we've all seen how the Great Horde likes to guarantee Russian miners at the start. Usually Odiev, sometimes Ryazan. Uh, it makes some sense for them to choose Kasim as Kasim is actually Sunni to start. You don't usually think of Russia as uh, having to deal with Sunni, but well, this is 1444. They are coming back from the Mongol invasions. We've already seen that the Ottomans going after Byzantium first, fulfilling the Prophet's wishes, and looking to do a pretty good job at it. Byzantium not getting any help in this game. I've seen them ally Serbia before, but it was not to be this time. And uh, the Ottomans definitely going to win that war unless Byzantium gets some divine intervention. And... Uh, does not appear to be forthcoming. Castile going for Leon, but Leon guaranteed by Portugal. So we have an early conflict between two historical friends. That's pretty rough, but from what I've seen, that actually usually doesn't affect Portugal and Castile's relationship all that much. They'll fight this out over Leon and then ally pretty, pretty soon afterward. Aragon fighting Catalonia. Catalonia not having the biggest army right now. I've actually seen them win this first war over Aragon before, but uh, I'm guessing that's not going to happen this time. France actually chose to attack Dauphiné as its first target. Unfortunately, Dauphiné allied to Savoy. So France having a lot harder time of it for its first war than normal. Uh, again, I, I mentioned that I've seen them pick a lot of targets at the first. Usually Champagne is the most rewarding, and uh, not a good choice for them. Scotland taking advantage of the partition of England going for Northumberland. That's a new one. I've actually not seen Scotland get there first. Usually England uh, really likes to go in and take that land first as it's the most accessible of their development. But they've chosen Wales and now Cornwall, and Scotland going to take advantage. Sweden fighting Finland. As most of Finland occupied, Finland able to fight back a little bit, but not really going to help them all that much, unfortunately. Interesting. So now we do have Zaporozhi being spat out as a tributary state by Crimea. Crimea still at war with Kiev, so definitely find myself wondering where this came from. Or perhaps that might have been from a previous one run where Crimea just ate Zaporozhi. Regardless, not the best choice for Crimea as Yedisan being the Dniester estuary and uh, Crimea choosing to make that a tributary state instead of, you know, owning the estuary in their home node. But hey, uh, that's their choice. Surprised Poland hasn't pounced on Galicia Volinia, but they have gone for Krakow. Definitely a good call. Krakow having 23 development, and uh, historically, Poland's capital before the integration of Mazovia 
when it became Warsaw. Interesting war over here, we have Livonia fighting Piskov. Usually I've not seen these guys be all that opportunistic, but uh, definitely not the case this time. Piskov looking to expand with the Novgorodian giant next to them. <laughs> I know that's uh, not usually something you hear, but in this case, Novgorod... Uh, Definitely in a stronger spot than, well, definitely stronger than it is in the uh, the normal game. This time actually able to take Rujev and Tver. I've, I've seen them eat Tver before, but uh, Rujev, usually Muscovite. So uh, Novgorod able to take that in its home state. It appears that Kazan was able to vassalize Nizhny Novgorod, which has led them into war with Muscovy. Interesting choice there. Kazan's still not quite strong enough to take on Muscovy on its own, but they're giving it the old college try. And apparently the Timurids and Crimea are also involved in that war. Alrighty then. Kazan might actually have a chance here. I still think Muscovy is likely going to win the war because of Dimitri and the fact that usually when Kazan allies the Timurids, they're allying the Timurids that can go ahead and uh, send up whatever of their 50 force limit, but uh, this is not that Timurids. Though they do still have 17k running around, they're just fighting Afghanistan is, uh, instead. This little province being spat out for the Timurids over here on the other side of Kiva, or Kiva. They likely lost a war or accepted a threat in war, and uh, we have some great, great cough border gore. Where is the Ottoman army? Ah, Genoa! Genoa looking to be a little uh, cheeky, go for an attack on the Ottomans while they're busy with Byzantium. So I'm guessing we'll see the Ottoman army going for Azov or. Uh, perhaps making an appearance in Genoa itself. Despite their reduced status, as far as provinces are concerned, the Ottomans are still a very dangerous beast at this point. They are a lucky nation. They still have uh, Hadim, their general. They still have Mehmet II. And uh, they have cores everywhere. Not to say nothing of their massive starting army uh, that they're they did about the same thing as Ming did earlier. Held on to above their force limit, which I believe is 10 at this point. Uh, they held on to above their force limit initially and uh, used that to fight Byzantium. I think we saw 13 over there. Though right now we're only seeing 7. So it is possible that the Ottomans either sent off half of their force or sent off their entire force only to get it bashed in by Genoa. Didn't, didn't think I'd be saying that. Pretty sure the only time I've seen the Ottomans bashed in by Genoa is uh, in an Arumba video. Regardless, Portugal still at war with Castile. Portugal really doubling up on their guarantees. They tried guaranteeing Leon, that didn't work out. Then they guaranteed Galicia. And that's not going to work either. I don't know, maybe that friendship will be more strained than you might expect. Down in Morocco. Fighting Seuss and Fez. And dealing with rebels for his pains. Pretender rebels at that. Pretender rebels with a master at arms. That's uh, quite interesting. Still does have Seuss itself occupied, which definitely contributed to that uh, highly positive war score, but dangerous position here for Morocco. I think they'll get out of it fine. Tunis has already eaten most of Tripoli, save the city itself, has also taken Hodna from Kabylia. 
Cabilia, though, uh, being opportunistic itself, going for... Oh, lordy, I cannot pronounce that province name. Going after Algiers. <laughs> and uh, hoping to... Well... Double in province size. And more than double in development. Doubt it'll save him from Tunis and or Tlemcen later, but... Uh, again, giving it the old college try. The Mamluks have decided that Beja, or Beja, is going to be their first target. They usually have these two provinces down here in 1444. Interesting little Mamlukian tendril to uh, Medribari, but regardless, they want it back. Down here, Semyon Eden, as expected. Ethiopia also taking back Shua as well. Adal taking back uh, Aosa. Harar, however, still out. That could be a pretty nice early take for Ethiopia, or a rather needed reconquest for Adal. Warsong Glee actually getting a little lucky. We might have seen earlier that uh, Hafun was actually under Majertin at the very beginning. Or Majertin. Or Majertin. Not sure how to pronounce that either. Boy. Uh, Marahan had the core up there, but uh, Warsong Glee managing to sneak in and take that. The rest of Africa looking pretty usual. There are very few revolter tags spit out here. The only one being Soyo down here in uh, the Congo, which they ate without any fanfare. Same thing over here in Mali. We have this tag, Kabu, that has these three provinces. I believe it's these three. And it uh, didn't last too long under Mali. However, Yatenga, a, uh, a tag that does not exist at the start of the game, spit out from Bosi. And uh, they're still alive for now. Guessing Songhai might like that little easier land. Though they are guaranteed by Messina. Meanwhile... The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth, Reduced Edition, trying to alleviate that a little bit by going after Galicia Valenia, though they also appear to be at war with the Teutons. Makes GV's job a little easier, but I still expect them to uh, lose most of their land to this war. Kiev getting off with just a vassalage from Crimea. They might possibly be able to leverage that get freedom later on if they uh, get friendly with Lithuania or Muscovy, or possibly even Novgorod. Speaking of, Muscovy turning the tables on Kazan here. Ryazan actually being the one to seize the day, go after uh, Kasim. And Ostrakhan's reprieve has not lasted long. They are now facing the full might of Circassia, the Great Horde and Nogai. Likely to get partitioned among those three. Or perhaps just the latter two. Kazakh reduced to a one province minor. Uzbek really wanting those cores back. Probably likely to do the same to the Siberian Khanid up here pretty soon. Khorasan reduced a bit. I, uh. Yeah, that seems to be the case. I don't think they were this small earlier. Or maybe I misjudged. I, I think I think Afghanistan actually took a little bit of a bite out of him. I could be incredibly mistaken now. It is now April. Okay, it is now April of 1449. Let's check the great powers. Persia hanging on to the eighth spot. 157 development hasn't changed. John Purr has clawed its way back into a spot with 165. Ashikaga still holding on with 180. England's still there with the 188, having taken these two, but having lost, well, at least part of Northumberland to Scotland. The Mamluk still sitting at 190. Poland jumping up to 200 with the Union. Ming almost back up to its usual number one spot, now with 231 development. They took that all from Wu, who, as you might recall, was a great power earlier. 
And Castile holding on to the top spot at 234. That is soon to be their usual 243, as soon as they take Galicia back. Interesting bit of trivia, I think we narrowly miss seeing Naples as a great power, the AI managing to complete not just pizza, because uh, after they eat all of Sicily, they have, I believe, 147 development, and uh, if they'd managed to get that at the correct time, then they would have actually managed to become probably the 7th or 8th great power. It might have happened at some point, I'm not sure. Venice took a large bite out of Croatia, which was then finished up as uh, you know, leftovers eaten by Bosnia. Styria is still existing. Alliances with Slovenia, Mitra, and Salzburg. I don't think that alliance chain will, uh, will stop Austria when they come knocking, but definitely better than nothing. I mean, they have survived at least the first few years with... Uh, Hungry, hungry Austria. Speaking of hungry, Hungary actually attacking Bulgaria. Oh my goodness. Bulgaria getting the personal union over Serbia. That's pretty interesting. Uh, I'm sure we've all seen how it's fairly common for Serbia to get PO'd at the beginning. Uh, their ruler, not that incredibly young. I think he's in his 60s, so uh, he can die pretty young and without an heir, and uh, definitely see some, some personal unions happening there. Wallachia also seizing the opportunity, going after Bulgaria. Epirus involved, though... Oh yeah, their army is up there with, uh, with those two going for simultaneous sieges of each other's capitals, that being Serbia and Hungary. It's an interesting war. I think the uh, Serbian-Bulgarian Commonwealth, as we might well call it now, have a chance in this war, but they've got to keep their forces combined, and they have to be mindful of Janos. Janos Hunyadi, the White Knight, a excellent general, one of the only guys who has a shot against the Ottomans at the very beginning, being a little bit better than Hadim. And look at this! The Ottomans losing to Byzantium. The Byzantines regaining a foothold in Anatolia, reclaiming Nicomedia. I do have Purple Phoenix, so uh, they probably got some points for that. That's new. I... in this... In this one, where the Ottomans have kept their cores, I've never seen them lose that first war to Byzantium. They're also still at war with Genoa, do still have CO occupied, but uh, can't see him getting much of anywhere with just Hood of Endegar. No, no, you can never count the Turks out. But Byzantium somehow managing to win that. I, I still don't know how the Ottomans lost their army. That's interesting. Georgia ate most of Imeritia earlier, but now falling to their uh, really a frankly usual conquest from Kara Koyonlu, though Kara usually a little bigger than this. Armenia also losing Yerevan and Nakhchivan to Kara. Uh, also interesting, Kara usually likes to take some vassals. I think that's going to happen to Georgia but you can't be sure. Kara managing to get Erzurum back. I'm guessing what happened there was uh, Dolkadir attacked at Kleonlu and forced them to give that core back. Still good for Kara. Syria has eaten Lebanon. The Mamluks are dealing with noble rebels. And uh, interestingly enough, just took their cores back. Was expecting them to or maybe get a vassal down there. Hey, so the little uh, little nation down here of Sharjah, eaten by Najd very early, but does still have some separatists, and those separatists are bigger than Najd's army. So 
maybe we could see Sharjah coming back up. Well, that there is my timer. It's been half an hour, so if anybody actually has watched this, thank you for watching, and uh, I hope to see anybody next time. Have a good one. Bye.